You will notice when Elijah started praying for rain, the Bible said he put his head between his knees. The, for me, the feeling of putting your head in between your knees is to shut out outside voices. You may have too many people talking and too much noise, too many people influencing you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and you get it wrong because people by nature are manipulators. This is the Potter's Touch. Hi, I'm Sarita Jakeson. I am so delighted to be sitting in the Bishop's Chair today to welcome you to the Potter's Touch. We have a wonderful word for you today from the Lord. Listen, and you'll be blessed. The Holy Spirit is in your life so that He can reveal things unto you. He's not just there to sit in your soul. He's there to reveal things, to reveal the unveiling, the apocalypse, the unveiling, to show forth the apocalypse is to unveil. It means that a thing is there, but it's covered up. So it's not that the Holy Spirit creates it, it unveils it. He unveils things that you didn't see. See, I could, I could take a Bible and cover it up and you wouldn't see it. I didn't create it, but it's covered and you can't see it. The moment I lift the cover, I unveil it. It is apocalypse. I unveil it to you. God says, there's some things I have in store for you right around you that you cannot see. Your girlfriend cannot see. Your husband cannot see. Your wife cannot see. Your children cannot see. He said, but I'm going to reveal, I'm going to unveil what is yours. That's shouting stuff right there. That's shouting stuff right there. I'm gonna unveil what is yours. I'm, I'm gonna unveil it to you. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna unveil it to you. One of my sons was talking to me about getting married and how do you know when it's the right one? I said, baby, I can't explain it, but you know it. You absolutely know it. You know in your spirit that this is gonna be a person that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. You just feel it. There's a connection. There's an energy. And if you don't have that, don't do it. No matter how cute they are, no matter how fine they are, no matter how much money they got, because you can be rich and crazy, you can be cute and crazy. You, 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 you want to connect with somebody through, through a revelation of the spirit that we were meant to be together. This is important stuff. This is stuff that scripture may not des designate to you. Yes. See, because we don't need the Holy Spirit to reveal what the word has expressed. We need the Holy Spirit to get down into the details of what is true for you. Yes. There aren't no scriptures telling you who to marry or where to live or what your gifts are. So you can study the word until you turn blue in the face. Until you hear the Holy Spirit, you won't have clear direction as to the details and the demographics of what God has designed for your life. And that's what the Holy Spirit yearns for, to be able to have a deeper communication unto you. But it has been revealed unto us by Spirit. And then it gives you the integrity of the Holy Spirit's revelation in the next line. It says it's been revealed unto us by a spirit, and then it says the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. It's like a search engine in a computer that brings to the surface that particular information that's cut to the continuity of your request. That's the way the Holy Spirit, it searches all things. It knows everything that's out there, everything, even the deep things of God, and brings before you that that is yours. Are y'all with me? Now, it says, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. I want to spend a minute there because I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is not just power. It's not just power. It's not just energy. Like electricity is power and it's energy, but it's not intelligence. You understand? It runs the lights. It'll run an oven. It'll run a microwave. That's power, but it can't think. When you start th talking about the Holy Spirit, the correct way to refer to the Holy Spirit is a he, not a it, okay? The he of the Holy Spirit identifies that the Holy Spirit is not, ju is not just power, but is intelligence. See, wind is power, but we don't worship wind. Waterfalls are power, but we don't worship water. And this, this, this minute distinction between phrases sets us apart from some other religions, some other ideas that reduce the definition of the Holy Spirit uh, down to energy or force. And, and if, if, if you read over it, you won't even know that you've entered into error. 
You won't even know it because you say, well, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's true. You shall receive power, but the Holy Ghost is not power. He is more than power. He enables you to receive power, but he is more than power. What I'm trying to get you to hone in on is that the Holy Spirit is a person, and as a person, that's as close as we can get to a term to describing uh, the anthropomorphic realities of who God is, which simply means that that's a human way of expressing something that we don't have a word for it. So, yeah, we, we, so we really, when you start getting to the Godhead, nobody's going to master it because there's nothing to really compare it to. And so, so you're really trying to understand that, that the Holy Spirit is a he, not an it. And being a he means he has a personality so you can grieve the Holy Spirit. See, you can't grieve energy, but the Bible said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. You can grieve him because he has a personality, and with that personality, he has intelligence. Somebody say intelligence. So tonight, that's really what we're going to focus on. The Holy Spirit is our central intelligent agent. He is our central intelligence agent. He is our CIA. He, he, he releases information that you could not access otherwise. Intelligence is different from education. I have seen people that were educated and not intelligent. And I have seen people that were intelligent and not educated. intelligence dealing with aptitude the ability the intelligence of the holy spirit if you if you don't if we don't lay this foundation you won't respect the holy spirit and you will override its advice for your own <laughs> you will dare to think that you are smarter than the holy spirit <laughs> You will override the warnings of the Holy Spirit and the dictates of the Holy Spirit and take your advice over his advice and then wonder why it doesn't work out. The Bible says the Holy Spirit has such intellig intelligence that it searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. It knows everything. It knows everything. Where we get the word omniscience, 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 all-knowing, that the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. He knows the end from the beginning. You're making decisions based on the past and the present, but the Holy Spirit makes decisions knowing the past, the present, and the future. How could you ignore access to such divine, supernatural information? The Holy Spirit knows how things are going to turn out. It knows whether this is going to work for you 20 years from now. It knows exactly where you came from and what your background is and what is needed in order to bring you out. So you cannot, you, and this is a decision you make every day, whether you will accept his wisdom over your own. That's the decision you make every day of your life. And how you make that decision has a lot to do with what you have done with your life. Your life is a direct reflection of whose voice you listen to. <laughs> Just think about it in the natural. I can, put you, I can take somebody whose life was going downhill and put them around somebody who, who, who begins to infuse them with intelligence and wisdom and direction and the person who was going downhill will start going up. You are the sum total of the voices you listen to. That's why you got to be careful who you run with, who you hang with, who you talk on the phone with, who you listen to, who you interact with, who you go to in trouble. Because let me tell you something, anytime somebody has your ear, they influence you. They really do influence you. Uh, I, I, I travel a lot with the same guys. We go everywhere same guys you know you just hear what doom, 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 doom. we go everywhere and and all of the guys have their own expressions and do you not know just by hearing them use certain expressions i look around and i will be saying some of that crazy stuff and i say that's not what you say but if i'm around it the influence they, they influence you with their intelligence until you adapt their language pattern that's why you speak english you didn't have to take an english class you just exposed yourself to people who spoke English and you started expressing abstract ideas in English language because you were in a house with people ex who expressed abstract ideas in English language. If we took you as a baby and put you in a Latino home where they were speaking Spanish, you wouldn't need a Spanish class. 
We're all expressing love or anger or hunger, but we use the tools of language to communicate the same ideologies. So if you can understand the influence of that intelligence on your thought pattern and without ever taking an English class, you just came here at three and four and five years old just speaking English so good. Who else is influencing you? And how much have you picked up from listening at the wrong voice? Still to come on The Potter's Touch. I would rather be out of favor with you and in favor with God. I want to know the things that are freely given to me of God so that I can enjoy them. It could be possible that I've been left a supernatural inheritance and I'm starving to death for the lack of something that he has given to me, but it has not been revealed apocalypse unto me because I'm not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Have you ever wanted to discover the difference between God's desires and yours? Or learn how the Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of God? God has a specific plan for you. His desire is for you to discover His will and to receive the fullness of His blessing. The Holy Spirit is our central intelligence agent, it's our CIA. You're making decisions based on the past and the present. The Holy Spirit makes decisions knowing the past, the present, and the future. Your life is a direct reflection of whose voice you listen desire, to. Desire, pray, and believe you will receive it. When you write us, visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2, you'll be given CIA, The Spirit Speaks, on three DVDs. Tune in to the hidden wisdom the Holy Spirit has for your life today. Now, if the Holy Spirit searches, yea, the deep things of God, and He knows the end from the beginning, and He does, how much time do you spend listening to the Holy Spirit? I'll bet you that 90% of the people in this room don't even know how to listen to the Holy Spirit. I bet you 90% of the people who've been in church for years and years and years have, have never even had a conversation, been taught about how to listen to the Holy Spirit. I bet you they don't know it. I bet you they don't live in an atmosphere where, where they have take the time to know when you got it right. You understand what I'm saying? There, it, it'll, it, sometimes it'll be a certain song that gets sung, and it's something that the Holy Spirit wants sung in the service, and when you get it right, the Holy Spirit takes over the room. Not only do you need to be blessed in that moment, but you need to note that moment and begin to understand that feeling, that voice, yeah. that sensation was the Holy Spirit so that you can get where you know His voice and know what He wants at any given time. Oh. Uh, one of the greatest enemies to really knowing and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit is busyness. When your life is full of clutter and busyness and stress, it is hard to hear his voice in a storm. You need a calm place. The Bible said, be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. So when, you, when you're trying to figure out what is the will of God, you're just frantic, you're just falling apart, shut up. You'll, you'll never get a clear understanding of his voice in confusion. Just be still. That's why the enemy sends confusion. So that you'll be in turmoil. God is not the author of confusion. The enemy sends confusion so that you won't have clear direction. One of my favorite scriptures, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. If you would study to be quiet, I'm just not a quiet person, study it. <laughs> right, if you're writing no study to shut up, yeah. Tweet, tweet that out and see if you get some feedback from, from Twitter world on study to shut up. It, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get better when Dr. James comes, you're gonna get that real classy stuff, but I'm the, like the raw, unvarnished version. Yeah, amen. I got a pretty high rating, <laughs> hallelujah. He goes on to prove why we should listen. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. He said the spirit of God coming forth out of God knows God in the same way that the spirit of a man coming out of a man knows the man. So you're getting divine intelligence, secret, credible information from God regarding what? Write this down, my purpose. 
my purpose. How in the world can you be happy if you don't know your purpose? How, how can you applaud yourself, reward yourself, have the feeling of satiety, of confidence, if you don't know your purpose? You don't know when you did good and when you did bad. So now you're depending on other people to clap for you to make you feel good about yourself because you are basing the feeling of satiety on their reaction because you have no compass and you have no purpose. The Holy Spirit knows what is your purpose. That ought to be goal number one. Frankly, I don't pray uh, much about which suit to buy because I really don't think God cares. You know, if you want it and you can afford it, buy it. I don't go into a trance and a coma about that. If I want a blue house and not a green house, I don't go on a fast to find out stuff like that. I'm seeking the Holy Spirit to know purpose for my life. What is the will of God for my life? What should I be doing at this season in my life? Because just because God told you to do something when you're 20 doesn't mean that he wants you to do it when you're 50. Yeah, give us this day our daily bread. I need a daily ongoing relationship with God so I can know exactly what he wants me to do right now. I got all kinds of voices trying to influence me every day. But when the rubber meets the road, what makes you a great man or a great leader or a great person is to be able to shut out the outside voices, turn on the inner voices and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will notice when Elijah started praying for rain, the Bible said he put his head between his knees. The, for me, the feeling of putting your head in between your knees is to shut out outside voices. You may have too many people talking and too much noise, too many people influencing you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and you get it wrong because people by nature are manipulators. I mean even nice people. I mean, even good, sweet, kind, soft-spoken people are manipulators. I mean, little three-year-olds are manipulators. Everybody who had a three-year-old start laughing, because them little nice little three-year-olds, the little with the fine little dimples and cheeks, he is just as sneaky as all get out. And they will manipulate you, and if they don't get through to you, they will go to your husband and manipulate him. They will work one against the other at five. Mama don't care if I go outside. They ain't me ask mama. Where did they get them sneaky classes from? They are manipulators by nature. Now you know if a nice little five-year-old can be a manipulator, you know a 25-year-old. So what happens when your life is the end result of a series of being influenced by manipulators? Mm. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. That's what we want to know. That's what I want to know. What are the things that are freely given to us of God? What did you give me? What have you purposed for me? What can I do? What can I be? Lord, don't let me spend 20 years trying to be something that I wasn't supposed to be. Don't let me work my hind end off trying to shape myself into something that you never wanted me to be in the first place. Teach me to be appreciative and celebrate who I am. Because I'm getting older, I don't have time to spend the rest of my life running around trying to turn into something that I am not so that you will like me better. I'm too old for that. Go ahead and dislike me. I would rather be out of favor with you and in favor with God. I want to know the things that are freely given to me of God so that I can enjoy them. It could be possible that I've been left a supernatural inheritance and I'm starving to death for the lack of something that he has given to me, but it has not been revealed apocalypse unto me because I'm not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Jacob was right in the midst of a son he was grieving for, grieving for Joseph, but he did not know Joseph until the Bible said, and Joseph revealed himself to his brethren. You could be in the midst of the best years of your life and be missing it because it is not revealed unto you what God has available unto you. Somebody else could be in your life and be happy. Oh God, I'm not going to fool with you. This is going to get good in a minute. Hang in there with me. 
So, so that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. And for me, that's important so that I'm not running after stuff that's not freely given because you have to work too hard to get stuff that's not yours. Glory to God. You, oh, I wish I could really just get down in it. That's a lot of work trying to get something that's not yours and sneak it and steal it and dodge it and fight for it if it's not yours. When it's yours, I don't care who else is holding it. They're going to have to give it up when it's yours. Once you know the purpose of God in your life, you got to start speaking it every day. Don't just know it intellect, but turn it into information. Start speaking out the things of God. If you get something out of knowing it, but you get another level out of speaking it. When you line up your speech with what you know, you bring yourself in alignment with God's purpose, you shoot out like a rocket because you don't have any deviations or discrepancies. You are directed. No deviations, no discrepancies, just directed by the Holy Spirit. No deviations, say that with me, no deviation, no discrepancies, just direction. That's what you want for this year of your life. No deviations, no discrepancies, just direction for your life. That's what you want. No deviations. Don't sidetrack me. No discrepancies. Don't try to pull me down into confusion and chaos. I want direction for this year in my life. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, so he said, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for there are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. He said, what God is going to say to you will go against the natural grain. You, you, you know you've been talking to God when it doesn't make any sense to you. The natural man cannot receive the things of God because the natural man depends on senses for information. The natural man is informed through his eyes, through his ears, through his taste, through his smell. All of that is sensual. There's a difference between sensual and sexual. Now, sexual is sensual, but you don't have to be sexual to be sensual. Sensual means that all the information you get is coming through your five senses. When God starts speaking to you in another dimension, it defies your senses and it doesn't make sense to you. Oh, no, y'all don't hear me. It doesn't make sense to to march around a wall every day for six days and seven times on the seventh day and then blow a trumpet and the wall will come down. It doesn't make sense to take two fish and five loaves of bread and give it to 5,000 people and feed 5,000 men, not to mention women and children. It doesn't make sense for me to step off the safety of a boat into a tornado and walk on the water. It does not make sense that I could be running out of everything but a handful of meal and bake a cake for the man of God first. That doesn't make sense. And when you start telling people stuff like that, people at work and people you're related to and people you're connected to, they say you're crazy, you're in a cult, you lost your mind, you have a nervous breakdown, and they don't mean no harm. It doesn't make sense. Faith never meant to make sense. It was never designed to make sense. It does not need the sensual. It needs the spiritual. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you want. You want a spiritual ability to be able to be informed on another level. And you have it. You're just not using it. You have it. You're just not using it. You, you who walked into a room and just felt funny and didn't know why and said, I'm leaving, that's spiritual. Everybody in here has it. You're just, not, you're just not developing it. You're just not using it, but you do have it. That spiritual ability to, to, to know something's wrong with your child and they haven't said anything, but you know in your spirit that something's wrong with her. I don't care how she grins and how she laughs down in your spirit. You know, you have it. You're not using it. You walked in the room and decided I'm leaving out of there. It just doesn't feel good in there to me. I'm not going out there tonight. I feel danger in there. You weren't informed through your eye gate. You weren't informed through your ear gate. But down in your spirit, an alarm went off and said, get out the building. You met somebody. You didn't even know him. But something in your spirit said, there's something wrong with that guy right there. You have it. You're just not using it. 
That's the realm that the Holy Spirit wants to interact with you. That may be underdeveloped. You may not have used it to its highest degree, but you can work it out. There's a scripture in Hebrew that I don't have time to look for it right now, but it talks about your spiritual senses being exercised by reason of use. And what that literally means, the word exercise, is the same word that we get gymnasium from. It means you need to take your spiritual senses to the gym and work them out. They will get stronger if you use them. If you would stop always talking to people you can see, and start talking to the God that you cannot see. As you exercise your spiritual senses, they get stronger. Don't think that you're not spiritual and you can't be spiritual. You are spiritual. You're just not working out. I can bring a little skinny itty bitty fella up here, uh, just weighs 78 pounds soaking wet, and you'll say he don't have uh, as much muscles as a bodybuilder. He does. He has every muscle the bodybuilder has. He just has not worked it out by reason of use. You have it. You are not using it. I'm sure you were blessed by the word today. And we'll be right back to pray with you. Have you ever wanted to discover the difference between God's desires and yours? Or learn how the Holy Spirit reveals the deep things of God? God has a specific plan for you. His desire is for you to discover His will and to receive the fullness of His blessing. The Holy Spirit is our central intelligence agent, our CIA. You're making decisions based on the past and the present. The Holy Spirit makes decisions knowing the past, the present, and the future. Your life is a direct reflection of whose voice you listen to. Desire, pray, and believe you will receive it. When you write us, visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. You'll be given CIA, The Spirit Speaks, on three DVDs. Tune in to the hidden wisdom the Holy Spirit has for your life today. God longs not just to provide all you need, but for your whole family and for 1,000 generations to come. You will live and die and not spend up all the blessing that God's going to release upon you and upon your children and upon your children's children. He supplied more than enough in the Garden of Eden, and that is still God's desire for you today. For helping us reach others with your best gift of any size, you will receive a Beyond the Blessing DVD. Just visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. Adam had to think himself special. He had to feel like, this is where I live. I dwell in the place of abundance. When your gift is $75 or more, we will include Bishop Jake's many book, 1,000 Generations of Blessing. However, when your gift is $150 or more, we will also add Bishop Jake's four-message DVD, 1,000 Generations of Blessing, along with an inspirational coaster set. Let us help change the direction of your legacy for 1,000 generations. Thank you for listening in on The Potter's Touch today. I know that you were blessed by the Word. It's going to help you grow. And we'll see you next time. In Jesus' name.